This is Karis Alexander. I want to welcome all the new subscribers. I want to let you know that I have been traveling. I have also had an opportunity to reflect on what I have been sharing since 2010. And what has transpired for me is, is a shift in how I want to be able to support each and every one of you through the sharings and also through the services that I offer. As I look at this physical world system and what I have learned, it is so important for me to share so that I do not forget who and what I am as essence. And I've come to the realization that it is paramount that we understand the codes of this matrix that we are born into, especially in times of chaos. What I have found in my energy healing practice as I use astrology along with the power of vibrational planetary sound in conjunction with the energy systems of the body in terms of facilitating health, healing, and recognition of our essence with those that I work with, I have found that by studying astrology, by studying the astrological blueprint, it will allow us to let go of some of the tension caused by the internalizing stress and constant feeling of being out of our element. By studying astrology, it allows us to perceive the background frequency in times of chaos, even when it feels like the world is crumbling under our feet. Astrology allows us to engage our physical experience as it never ends in time and space. Only the physical material body does as our essence experiences the eternal now. When we use astrology as a practice, it allows us to bring awareness to what is unfolding in our lives, allowing us to experience and explore the mystery and the magic in the element of surprise that unfolds as we traverse our physical experience. The shift that I'm making is connecting to the music of the spheres that resonates within each of us, whether we realize it or not. The music of the spheres influences, influences all aspects of our thought, thought process, and the mind, which is a result of our experiences in and beyond our solar system. Therefore, by understanding cycles of time through the language of astrology, it will help each of us to straddle between two worlds, an environment that fears astrology or looks down upon it against a community whose developments pioneer the work of medical astrology in a brand new, albeit ancient, form. By using astrology and the energy system of the chakras and sound as a system has presented me with the opportunity to mend the two very disparate points of view, allowing each of us to grow and reconnect to our essence with the intention of reconciling what shows up as an opposition. We individually and collectively are a byproduct of a history which has been formulated for us, not by us. As you've been listening here, for many of you, since 2010, how I've been sharing how we are living someone else's story. Now is the time more than ever for each of us to have the opportunity to remember who we truly are and no longer remain in a frequency of forgetting. Therefore, we can only know who we truly are when we have let go of who we have become. I'm going to be sharing as we penetrate the codes of the matrix through astrology, sound, and the chakra systems, the reconstruction of consciousness. And I'll be sharing a series of articles and YouTube videos in order to express what I am experiencing in the hopes that you too will be inspired by what it is that I share, allowing you to get a deeper sense of what is really transpiring on the physical world stage. The title of this sharing is Reconstructing Consciousness, Part 1. The new movie Ghost in the Shell reveals how the planet Saturn is connected to our basic survival needs. 
Now it is important to remember that we assimilate the impressions we receive from fashion, film, music, politics, media, etc. And as we integrate their messages, we make their ideals part of our lives as well as our individual myths. Ghost in a Shell is an American science fiction film in which cyborg counter cyber terrorist field commander the Major Scarlett Johansson and her task force Section 9 thwart cyber criminals and hackers. Now they must face a new enemy who will stop at nothing to sabotage Hanka Robotics Artificial Intelligence Technology. This task force section 9 is a subliminal that truly references the music of the spheres, the background frequency of our solar system. The power control force are using artificial intelligence technology in order to simulate an organic process that is taking place in our solar system through the nine planetary bodies or the music of the spheres. As many of you know, I've been using Scarlett Johansson to reference how movies are used in order to seduce us into forgetting who and what we are. The movie Ghost in the Shell makes interesting connections about what is taken from a person in the transition to a robotic body, which can be similar to one's transition from its original state of essence or nothing to one's egocentric human self living in physical material reality. You see, the movie Ghost in the Shell makes a mistake in not exploring the themes more like Johansson's character's origin story, which should have tied back to the underlying themes of identity and consent more directly instead of letting the audience make of them what they will. The film Ghost in the Shell seems to want the audience to draw its own conclusions about how to interpret the evil at the heart of the story. Just as we are to interpret the evil at the heart of our individual and collective stories, I think it is time for each of us to bring greater awareness to whether we simply remain lost and distracted and disillusioned in the stories that proliferate the world stage, all designed to make us feel victimized by the physical world and the circumstances we find ourselves in? Or do we seize the opportunity to dissolve our individual and collective programming in order to become the inner architect of our manifested reality. It is important to remember that the archetypes that proliferate the physical world stage are universal projections of the collective emotions and thoughts of humanity, commonly known as the collective unconscious. It is in fact archetypes that provide each of us with the models of who we are and prototypes of who we may want to become. In our world of witchcraft, the fictional characters and celebrities who represent various aspects of our consciousness assume the right to subliminally teach each of us about our own inner qualities by showing us the scope of what is possible for the human condition. However, if one dares to see life as a perfect mirror of one's inner emotional state of being, that keeps one fixed in the archetypes that one absorbs into one's consciousness that they are living through, then would it not be possible that through greater awareness one could transcend these archetypes and become a more evolved human being, living through the natural expression of who one is and who one is becoming? When we dare to bring greater awareness to the background frequency or archetype predominating our physical world, we have greater control over our individual and collective consciousness. Once we grasp the archetype of the victim, which predominates our physical material reality construct, then we bring greater awareness to the dysfunctional archetype of the root chakra or the mudlahara chakra. And while I have spoken about this chakra in the past, it is the Mudlahara chakra which filters energy up from the earth and connects our essence to the basic reality of life. It is important to know that any emotional issues relating to this chakra revolve around our essential need 
for survival and our basic needs for security in the world. This includes the shelter for a home to protect us, financial security, adequate food for nourishment. We also need good connections to our families, friends, and community and our country. It is important to note that the root chakra becomes damaged when we lose our connection to our Mother Earth. That is when we become disconnected from the most basic levels of existence. Does it not feel like we are moving towards a ghost in the machine like world as some of us live between worlds? One in which many feel victimized by the physical world and those who have a desire to move beyond an order of compliance in order to complete one's journey. And yet, as we continuously tend to get stuck in certain stages of life due to the mirage of forgetting, which is a byproduct of living in a third dimensional world that creates an energetic environment in which we lack courage or the willpower or determination, which are the qualities of the warrior archetype, can make living very complex and yet miraculous. Are we not here to transform and transcend this victim archetype in order to evolve emotionally into greater coherence and harmony? allowing each of us to neutralize the energetic imprints imposed on each of us with awareness of the moments in which we feel victimized by the physical world one has been born into? When one desires to bring greater awareness with the truth of this victim mentality, then that, it is then that we increasingly take more and more responsibility for our lives, freeing ourselves from the confines of our third dimensional reality. Now, if one desires to transcend, one must release any interference pattern related to the root chakra as the dysfunctional archetype of the victim and transmute those energies to the functional archetype of the creator or mother. Recognizing the dysfunctional archetype is the first step, bringing awareness as we move through and into the virtual reality constructs which are more functional, we are able to manifest the archetype of the creator or mother at that point in which we become better able to master fundamentals of survival instead of remaining as one of life's victims. Therefore, having the capacity to ground oneself into the earth is key. That is getting out of our heads and into our bodies. It is through the life of the body that we are able to experience pleasure and pain, connecting with our feeling. Only by maintaining a direct conscious link to our bodies can we discharge the accumulated emotional energy of our daily lives and yet the movie Ghost in the Shell subliminally suggests that we consider the invitation to become stagnant and stuck so that we stay fixed and inflexible in forms of expression, unable to meet our daily challenges with vigor and vitality so that we succumb to become ghosts in the shell of an artificial life and an artificial intelligence. In my next sharing, I will speak to the planet Saturn and her relationship to the Maldahura or root chakra. Yes, it is not a he, it is a her that is Saturn. And I'll explain more in detail in my next sharing. And while there are many chakras throughout one's energetic body, the primary ones are the eight that run along the spinal column. Yes, I believe there are eight. And I'll explain that and explore that in more detail. We will look at Saturn as it relates to our etheric body, as it is considered to reside in the first or root chakra, which is located at the base of the spinal column. Yes, it is the first chakra, the chakra of the earth itself, that represents form and solidity. This chakra relates to our ability to be grounded, to attain material success, 
and the ability to focus on our manifested needs and desires. It stands to reason that any fear of lack of resources and an inability to function well in worldly manner can be a result of the malfunction in the first chakra. You see, it is the planet Saturn that is that inner architect within each and every one of us. That archetype that is allows us to construct the world in which we want instead of the world that's being formulated for us. We must become the masters of Saturn in order to design our future world. Now, if there is any way in which I can support you with an astrology reading via Skype or teleconference or a distance healing session, please feel free to check out my consultations page. I'll have a link in the description. I'll also post the article that I'm reading from in the description. And feel free to check out my latest sharings on YouTube and definitely to subscribe to YouTube. And when you look at the consultations page, I have designed a new astrology reading, define our understanding the basic needs which are incorporated in your astrological blueprint. And I'm offering this reading for $75. It's an hour reading. And it's the first time I've offered a reading at such a value for you. Because I really uh, believe that for those of you who have been listening and may not have been able to afford the services that I offer, if I can support you at a lower cost and get you into understanding your basic survival needs and the patterns that are arising as a result of not being able to identify your basic survival needs and being able to bring awareness to your basic survival needs, the patterns that keep manifesting over and over again that are not allowing you to move forward in your life. I thank you so much for tuning in. It truly is a glorious time to be here.